Tom? Hey, there you are. Hi, how are you? Okay. You hear me well? Yeah, and I, but I, I'm seeing you only on the little screen. Well, Get up but, here at the big screen. Okay, but you see me, and you can hear me. That's the most important thing. I can't see myself. Oh, i got to turn on the camera. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Wait a minute. Um, i got to... What am I doing now? I can't find my camera. No, but your camera is on because I, we are seeing you. Okay. And you are seeing me, no? Yeah, but only on the small screen. Yeah, but that's no problem, I think. So, um, thanks. I can see myself. Can you see yourself? Yeah? No. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Tom. We see you. Yeah, we see you perfectly well. Okay. Perhaps s step step back a little, perhaps. Yeah, okay. Okay, great. So, thanks so much for accepting our invitation. And uh, as you know, uh, we intend to discuss with you, uh, first of all, uh, your views on time and music. Yes. And especially since it's the subject of this first session of this group, uh, the way that you challenge the musician who is in the who, who plays your your compositions, for example, the chord catalog and these kind of pieces. So, yeah. to start with, what do you think about uh, this uh, need to put the musician in a difficult position in front of the instrument to challenge and to to look for some virtuosity in his way of of playing? It, it is difficult, but I think the important thing not to say mm -hmm. is that. Uh, Music played by a machine and music played by a human being is not the same thing. Uh -huh. And uh, I have the chord catalog you mentioned is a, is a perfect yeah. example because yeah. it's yeah. very easy to program the 8,178 chords possible in one octave. Mm -hmm. And people have done it and they played it on, on uh, pianola and on uh, automatic flutes, mm -hmm. and all, and all kinds of the Yamaha Discovery, all kinds of machines. Mm -hmm. so, and uh, it's but, very interesting and it's perfect. And but after five minutes, mm -hmm. the audience is gone. So just to be clear, in, in case someone uh, doesn't know the piece, uh, explain a bit the, the chord catalog. Uh, well, it's, it, it's all of the possible chords in in one octave: two note chords, three note chords, four note chords, all the way to twelve mm -hmm. note chords and thirteen. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a um, and I played it myself. I was the only one in the world who played it for for about fifteen years, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, one day, uh, a man named Samuel Breesen in Amsterdam yes. sent me a tape. He was playing it much better than I could play it. I was so pleased that, that the piece is finally uh, finding a real interpreter. Uh -huh. um, but uh, when Samuel Breesen plays the piece, he d it takes me about an hour, but he can do it in 35 minutes now. Mm -hmm. And he starts doing chuck, 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 He's a human computer. It's amazing, and people people do not walk out yeah, because yeah. watching a human being do this is much more interesting than watching a machine. But and the the difference is in the regularity of the playing, in the regularity no, of the, of the tempo. Regularity. It's a human being can't be can't be exactly a machine, and he comes very close. But the little irregularities, and then you there's danger. You, you say. Uh, it's obvious that uh, uh, at any moment he could he could uh, uh, make a mistake, mm -hmm. and machines uh, don't have that interest. And you you were telling me before um, uh, that um, I think in in the in the so summer prison plays really fast, but yeah. you don't think that this changed something uh, essential in the piece. You think that it's the same piece, even if the time has really uh, changed. Exactly. Strongly. Let, me, let me go back to the days when I was a music critic, uh -huh. New York in the 70s. And I, uh, I used to get angry when I'd read the uh, uh, critics that said the piece was too long or too short. Mm. But it didn't make sense. Sometimes pieces seem too long or too short, but that's never the problem. The problem is always that there was a mistake somewhere. And then sometimes Bach, it seems too long. But it's because somebody is playing boom, 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 boom. Somebody else is like, 
the same trouble, and, 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 and it's alive, and it seems very short. So, you know, this is, a, a, the problem was a, 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 the interpreters who didn't have the feeling right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a problem that the composer uh, made, made a mistake with something. But, uh, but it's, it's never just a question, uh, it's never a problem that you can solve just by going uh, faster or slower. Mm -hmm. And you think, this thing about counting, uh, that it's so important in your, in your music, and I was thinking that perhaps uh, you have a counting structure, that yeah. it's the main thing on, on most of your pieces, but does, does it mean that the beat somehow exists outside of time? So it, it, it's a formal structure that exists in itself, and it's perfect because it's numbers, and then there's another thing, that it's the playing of this piece, or it's the same thing for you? But, uh, that's not only true of, uh, of, of counting pieces, that's true of everything. If I played uh, a music for you, now let's assume that it's going to be played by a tuba, and it goes, you can't say that one version was right and the other was wrong. It's the same.